Everyone knows Make. Okay. But still, we put a little slide here, so just. Yeah, just, just uh, what? Uh, so we all know it's an automation and integration solution that allows you to integrate any type of systems. And the, the main goal is to be able to automate uh, tasks that you do manually uh, in order to uh, save time, save money, obviously. Uh, so there are many, many different use cases that you can do uh, with the solution. Uh, we talk about some use cases that we built and some uh, use cases that we use as well uh, as uh, make uh, employees and so uh, So it's uh, broadly used, uh, so we have more than 150,000 uh, customers using the platform uh, in uh, 180 uh, countries. And uh, we add a new uh, integration, new connectors, we call that apps uh, in the solution. Uh, we have more than 1,500 uh, 1, uh, different uh, connectors, and uh, we are releasing new ones uh, every week, as I said, and five or six new every week. Uh, so that's a, it's a huge work, and uh, it allows our customers not to have to take care of the APIs that they cause. They just have to use the connector, and it will simply, uh, using the pop-up, uh, help them uh, do the, the integration with the systems that I will show you in the demo. Yeah, to update, uh, it's super, super painful. Uh, we have to update this. Uh, <laughs> when I joined, it was 1,000. Like, so it just shows that like, you're really working on the
our partners are also a source of these cases and these things. And this is important for sales again. So if we go somewhere, then we are able to show the use case. You know, hey, you're focusing on marketing automation. This is what you can do. This is what will save your time um, and money. And uh, success stories. I think this is my favorite part because I don't want to talk about just um, saving money and saving time, but it's actually about saving lives. So we have, for example, a partner in the UK that is focusing on healthcare. And when it was the, the biggest wave of uh, COVID uh, cases in the UK, he um, did a very simple automation that was monitoring the level of oxygen of the patient in hospital. So thanks to it, the, the nurses didn't have to go and check on each patient, but they had an application that showed them like, hey, this guy is so low on oxygen, you have to go and check them. So I think this is my favorite story. Also. Mm -hmm. using automation. And then, of course, our partners help us to promote, make, and raise the brain awareness. So, again, I think most of the uh, bullet points I wrote, um, we do with Olivia. So. so, what we do with our key partners? Um, uh, well, first, we define the objective. So, what they want to achieve, what um, applications, what vertical and horizontal they want to focus. Then uh, we write or like we discuss the joint value proposition. How we want to enter the market, what we want to do, what we want to achieve. Executive sponsorship, it means that me as a head of uh, service partners, I will talk to the partnership on their side. Our CEO will talk to their CEO. So we connect on like homogeneous level. Of course, this is about enablement, both technical and uh, sales enablement, marketing, goes without saying. And all the things together, those are the five pillars we do with partners. Um, I know it sounds easy, but it actually takes a lot of time to have a solid partnership, to build the foundation, build the trust, and, and then we can scale together. So I want to show you an um, example we did with a partner in Germany, Team of Future, up in South Africa. There was a need for enterprise features, also the enterprise application, and most importantly, the, the, the higher security standard that we offer on our self-service platform. So um, it was the quickest decision of a customer we had, uh, which was we entered the same day. And it was actually thanks to the partnership we have, and then thanks to the trust of the partner and the customer established the gap. The whole project took six months. And I think we are about to close the upsell very soon. So, okay. okay, speaking about the events, um, I think most of you are aware that before we were um, during this May, we were in Panama. So, we um, did a first uh, event in the Yoga in September 2021. We invited our partners, also technology partners, and also our service partners. Um, so we shared the vision, goals, and roadmap, and also our partners had um, opportunity to pitch what they do, how they work with make. They showed us the very cool scenarios, and um, of course, it was a pretty party as um, every conference uh, ends up. This is Patrick Schimek. He is our CEO, and he is, I would say, the head behind Integral Marketing Destination. Um, as the next team, I would like to share with you um, the meet and greet we did in Meta Office in Israel. Um, we actually have a really good partnership with Meta, Facebook, and uh, the connector of uh, Facebook leads us as one of the most popular. Um, that's why we decided to um, go to the marketing side and actually attract more of the agencies. And we were really lucky that Meta offered us their space in Tel Aviv. Invited about 30 enterprise accounts, and it was very successful. At the next event, um, we had an automation AL summit. It was in Israel again, and just look at the applications we were able to get on the stage with us. Meta, Monday, Wix, Amdox, um, Zendesk, and this is all thanks to partnership because we connect to them, because we build the trust, and then this event wouldn't happen if we didn't have those amazing application and also a partner backing up. And yeah, 700 attendees for the first event we did it with a partner. I think it was quite successful. And I think I haven't slept for three months. So. <laughs>
it looked very professional. It was almost like a breakfast. And that brings us here today, again, thanks to the partner. And we are here to strengthen the relationship with the partner, to support Alegria, to get better understanding of the French market and community, and to talk to you all. So mm -hmm. make sure that you stop at our booth in the first floor and talk to us. And we're also meeting new prospects and new customers, new partners. Hi, so I'm Benjamin Bote. Uh, I'm based in France. So I come from uh, different companies in the IPAS, in the integration space. <laughs> and uh, I got very, very well attracted by the low code area and especially automation. Uh, that's what I did uh, in Digromat at that time. So I joined uh, last November. Okay. Uh, so uh, my role is to individualize the solution, to present to the customers, to qualify the project of the and I work with the sales team uh, to talk about all the technical stuff, like architecture, for instance, or how we do the interface with this or that system. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, as a side note, uh, I'm in robotics, uh, so home automation and everything. So I committed uh, all my heart. So, which annoys a lot uh, my family, my wife, uh, my children. When they open the door, I know they open, I know when they switch off the lights, so I send a message to switch your lights. Now, how I do it myself. So, <laughs> it's super useful for me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and the goal uh, today for me is to make a uh, live demo of the solution on the use case. Very simple use case. In fact, the, the idea is for those that didn't play with the solution. I said play on purpose, so you will play with the solution uh, to, to understand how it works, how we build a, a scenario. So, it will be deep dive. Uh, we, we have other operations to show you a deep dive and maybe complex scenarios that we can. So, so for this demo, um, let's imagine we have a marketing team that wants to make a lead generation. So they, they organize an event and they uh, <coughs> ask, they propose on their website uh, the, the users uh, to subscribe. And the users will be able to decide if they go uh, online or on site. And the idea behind that is to uh, create new contacts. Uh, so what they want to do is to send uh, all the, the registrations, uh, all the contacts uh, to Salesforce uh, to uh, put this information also in the Google spreadsheet so that the, the teams can rapidly have a look uh, who uh, has registered. And also uh, to send a Slack message to a specific channel, to the sales team, when someone decides to go on site, just to let them know, okay, be aware that this guy will come on site, so be prepared to so it's very simple, but it can, it can allow me to show you uh, some of the apps and modules that we use uh, and how we can interface. So uh, rapidly before uh, I start with the, uh, the building of the scenario, let me show you uh, globally the platform. So uh, it's a, a multi-tenant fast application. So you just need a browser to have the snake. You don't need to install anything uh, locally. And uh, from here, you build uh, all the automations you want. You will also monitor them. Debug them. Uh, so anything you, you want to do with Meg will be done directly on the on, on this website. Uh, you when you enter, you are uh, linked to an organization. This organization is the pilot project, uh, and uh, you have different roles depending on the organization. Here I'm administrator, so I can see everything. Here I can show you everything, but I could just be a normal member, I would say, uh, of the solution that uh, has less rights, obviously. Uh, so. So one of the most important things here is the scenario. Here you see a little list of uh, all the active scenarios that we have. So let me just go uh, to scenarios here. So there are many, many other things. I, I won't have time to show you everything. Uh, here uh, you can see uh, the list of uh, scenarios that I built uh, for my demos, uh, for my customers, and so on. Uh, so you have two different types of uh, scenarios. One that is uh, one type is the scheduled scenarios. It means that they can execute regularly. So you can say every 10 minutes or every Monday or every uh, every day at 6 p.m. for example. So depending mm -hmm. on your use case, uh, you may need uh, to execute regularly and to check maybe for some new uh, things, some new objects in your in the database <coughs> or in, in, in the CRM. And you have the uh, triggered 
uh, scenarios. So this one can be called by any uh, third party application. So uh, you know we interface with 1,500 uh, different applications, uh, natively, let's say. Uh, and uh, some are able to make a direct call to, uh, this will be the case in my demo, uh, they can be configured to call uh, a scenario. Uh, so, so this one are, are, are pretty pretty good because it means that uh, when something happens, an event happens, it triggers immediately uh, a scenario in Make that propagates the data somewhere or sends an email, or does the thing we ask it to do. Uh, so, so let me uh, rapidly build the scenario we want. Uh, so uh, just I click plus to say I want to create a new scenario and then I will select the applications I want to interface with or interface to and the actions I want to do on this system. Uh, just uh, as a side note, so we have here a dot form. We'll be aware uh, it's a form uh, application so this is where the users will register. So I built uh, for that a little form, very simple, first name, last name, email. Uh, do you want to come on site or uh, online? Uh, so let me show you. I, I will publish it. I will open it uh, just so that I can, uh, I can <laughs> register myself to show you what it looks like after. Uh, I also have a, a Salesforce account. So here we create the contacts. So every time we have a first name, last name, email, I will just use this. I will create a new contact in Salesforce. Uh, I have my Google spreadsheets. Empty for now, but uh, it will be filled. And also, uh, we'll see after because uh, I will see I'm, I have time because I want to talk too much. So sometimes I don't have time to finish. So I will say, I will see uh, the Slack, the Slack channel. So I have a, a I continue what we do the, the Slack channel. So it is a, it's a private uh, channel in Slack, and this is where we'll get the messages that someone has uh, subscribed uh, on site. So, so let, let me go back uh, to make, let's click plus, and this is where I can see the 1,500 different apps that are already uh, interfaced uh, with make. So uh, to make it simpler, I have a search screen you know, where I can type directly. So as a first step, I want to be notified. I want my scenario to start every time someone registers in dot form. So I select this dot form, and you see here, I have a list of actions. This actions, we call this, we call it, sorry, a module. A module is an action in the system I want to use. So because I selected just form now, uh, we're talking about forms, submissions, and so on. And uh, one interesting thing here is that when it's written instant, it means it will be a trigger. It means that the scenario will be started automatically when something happens. I don't need to schedule it. It will be automatic. So I click this. So now it says, OK, now let's configure this, uh, this uh, we'll the webhook. Uh, so it says, OK. Um, I'm already connected to my job form. So I really did that before I show you because that it's faster, but uh, I could click add and I could connect. Uh, depends on the application. Some applications, they require uh, a key. Uh, some, they just need a user password. Some, they use more advanced uh, authentication like OVOS. Uh, so there are different ways. Uh, depends on the application, but I can click add and connect to my system. And, and now you see, it has already grabbed the list of uh, forms that are already in my account. And I can see here. <laughs> And when I click save, here, now it's doing something, you know, it's working. It says, it says, we train you online, we attach this webhook automatically for you. In fact, it used the API of JotForm to tell JotForm to contact us, uh, to contact Make, sorry, uh, when there is a new registration. So I didn't need to do anything more uh, on JotForm. This one is automatic. So I click OK. Uh, let, let's try it just to see if it works. So let's do a run once. So I'm debugging, I'm checking if it works, if I get the data, etc. So I do this, and then let's go to uh, the registration form. So we say event, côté, email, déposé, acme.com. And we put the number. Okay, and I say I want to join uh, on site. So I click register. So that just form says, okay, thank you. It says the fact that I registered. But let's see now what happened in Make. And we see that it has stopped listening. You know, there is a little uh, thunderbolt. It says, uh, it says uh, it has to be a And here you see there is a little one that shows me what happened. It says, oh, uh, you, I have been called. This is the data received. And the most important is this one. You see, I have full name, first name, last name, email, phone number. Uh, do I attend on-site, online? You see, all this data has been sent to the scenario. 
So I will leverage this data for the next steps. Because I have the first time, last time email. Okay, now I can go to steps four. So, and I can uh, create a new account, a new contact. So, so, let, so let, let me go now. See, it's only graphical. I click plus. Now, so this time I select Salesforce. So Salesforce. Okay, because I'm, I'm working with Salesforce, and we are talking about records. So I say I want to create a new record. And automatically, after I'm, I'm connected, uh, you see, I'm connected now. And uh, automatically, it has found all the objects that are in my Salesforce account. So it found that I have accounts, etc., a lot of things. I will filter. So I tap contact. Okay, I go to contact. And now it's loading uh, uh, all the metadata. It means all the fields that are required to create a new, a new contact. So automatically, it grabs this information from Salesforce. It knows that we require uh, last name, first name, etc. And it creates for me the form that allows me to fill the data information. And when I click on one field here, you see, I can select in this pop-up uh, all the data that comes from uh, just form. So it always gives me access to the metadata, uh, to the fields uh, that are uh, provided by the other uh, steps. So now I see that I have full name, so I will just select last name, first name. Okay, I will just use email as well, because uh, I don't want to take too much, too much time. See, uh, Salesforce provides a lot of, uh, of different fields. Huh? So I will use this email. So I go here, drag and drop. And I know one is mandatory. It's a unique ID. Uh, so this is uh, required by uh, Salesforce. You see, when it's required, I know it because it's in bold. When it's bold, it means mandatory. When it's not bold, it's optional. Uh, so I click OK. Uh, let's try rapidly. So OK, now it's listening. You know, it's waiting for uh, a new registration. Let's do it. I just go back. I go back and I do again. I click again register. So now let's go here. And I can see now that uh, it has executed and it has called the Salesforce. So if I go now to Salesforce and I refresh my, my page, uh, I should have now Ben Pote and uh, you know, you see, so it has created. So it's that simple. I didn't need to know anything about uh, how we call a Salesforce, uh, the type of request I have to do. Uh, so, so that's super uh, uh, useful. Let's do rapidly um, another step. So Google Sheets, we want to add uh, as information to Google Sheets. So now, again, uh, just have Google Sheets, Google Sheet, add a row. I want to add a row. So this is, a, this is not the correct account. I can, <coughs> can connect to multiple accounts. I, I will connect to my make account so that I can see, I can find my, uh, my file called registered users. So I say, OK, I want to select from a list. So it will load all the list of all the files I have in my uh, Google uh, account. So I select registered users. Now it finds uh, all the uh, different sheets that are in this spreadsheet. And uh, it grabs also all the, um, uh, the headers. So because automatically, so he saw, he read that there is date, first name, last name. So it says, OK, now what do you want to put for date, for first name, last name, etc. So let's do it here. Huh? So I do the same way as I did for Salesforce. Huh? So I just click first name, uh, last name, email, email, attendance, is it on site or, or online? So I click this. Okay. And for the date, I don't have the date information, but let's use a function that's provided with, uh, with Mac. You see here, uh, you have different functions. I could do mathematic functions. Uh, I could uh, do uh, string functions, like I capitalize everything, or uh, I calculate the, the char, the H mark. Uh, so I could do very advanced things also. But now, what I want to do just, uh, I want to pick uh, the date, the date the functions. And I just want to pick this. This is more a variable. And now, it's always uh, the timestamp of the current time. So OK, now, now I'm done. So I will, I will send the date, the current date and time, and the information of the user. So we start again, just to show you again. I will just uh, exchange the email so that there is no duplicate in my Salesforce. Uh, so I do this. So let's see what happened. OK, it has been created in Salesforce and also in Google Sheet. So if I go here, you see now, I have, I have the information. OK? Uh, and at the last step, so you see, you see how easy it's really like this. Obviously, we can do more. we can do the routers. You can say, OK, I want to go to the top, to the down. I will show you some screenshots, of examples of other more advanced uh, spaces. Uh, but this one is interesting because I will use the filter. So 
but I want to, to call Slack only if the, the, the registration is on site. I don't want to do it if it's online. Huh? So what I do here, I click plus. For the moment, I will just configure my Slack interaction. Huh? So I will type Slack. Uh, Slack. Okay. Now I want to send a message. So to send a message is create a message. This is the name they gave uh, at uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, at Slack. Huh? Uh, so now I will select on the list the channel on which I want to send the message. So now it's selecting public channel, but I want a private channel. It will load all the channels that are in my account. So I will say, I will, um, I will find it. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I didn't use the correct um, connection. Right? So, so it doesn't matter because I'm using a bot here, but I don't want to, to, send, to do a bot. I want to connect on my behalf. So it will be sent as if it was me that was sending the message. So, and, uh, and me, I have access to more uh, private channels. So let me just uh, select private channel. And uh, let's, let me refresh. Let's close again uh, all the private channels. Ah, because it's my demo effect, huh? I'm sorry. Uh, I also <laughs> selected another bot. I, I do so many demos that I have many connections because we can do bot interaction with this feature. We can send a form. Slack, and when the user see, clicks on a link, for example, it calls again a uh, link uh, for the interaction. So that's why I, I have this five connections. But now I wanted to connect with my own account, and my own account has access uh, to, uh, let's see, to event registrations. Okay? Uh, so a new um, on site uh, registration. So you see here, I'm just typing, I'm just typing uh, my. my Absolutely the text, but I can add some data that comes from the previous step. So I could use the form and I will say, okay, I will pick first name, I add a space, and I pick last name. Okay, so uh, let me click OK. But I want a condition, I want to go there only if uh, it's on site. So we do the filter. So you see here, I can click here and set up the filter and can make a condition here. You can say, the condition will be simple. Huh? If this field, so you see here, it's written on site. Huh? If it's, uh, as an example, uh, all the things you see here is example of data that we can retrieve uh, when we, when we, when it's called. Huh? And so text operator, I would say, when it's equals to on site, huh? I want to go to the next step. If it's not on site, it won't go to the next step. Okay? Um, because I want that time to show you all the, um, <laughs> all the different things, uh, I will ask you to trust me. I will say on site so that I show you the full, uh, the full uh, execution. So I can auto align, uh, I can zoom in, zoom out, depending on, on what I want to do. I start it, I go back here, I will just uh, uh, change the email again. Okay, it's on site. You see the selection is on site. Let's use this, click register, and let's see what happened. So you see here, it has gone through uh, all the steps. So logically, we have uh, okay, the same guy with different email. Yeah. Um, but here, uh, we see that we have also executed the, you see the filter here, the, the little one, uh, if I click, I can monitor. You know, I can know that uh, this guy has written on site. Okay? And we see that we have gone to the next step. So so it's, there is a check mark that says, uh, okay, it's green, it's okay. And, uh, and obviously, uh, now I sent a message to Slack. So let's see, let's go to Slack. Okay, you see, new on-site registration, then put it. So it's that simple. And uh, uh, of course, with this type of solution, uh, you are in a WYSIWYG environment. That means that all the things you design as a, as a, as a scenario, you can uh, monitor it uh, like this. You know, when you go, if I, if I go back here, so let me just save my changes. Uh, if you go to history, you can see all the executions. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see this one has four steps. If I go in details, I can see what happened. So this, uh, I can see on the right uh, the list of actions that I executed. I can go to advanced log to see more things that was started, uh, how long it took, I can see the step, etc. And uh, all the data that has been exchanged. Uh, and sometimes you can also replay, uh, you have an option to replay a scenario that has failed. So imagine uh, an API somewhere system is down. Uh, so we can ask uh, the uh, make to keep track uh, of this information so that the user and admin can replay uh, the exact uh, step that failed, for example. So it depends on the case you have. Is it clear? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, yes, you can automate. Uh, so so uh, you can automate uh, inside the scenario. You have a error handler, and uh, in the error handler, you can decide to retry like uh, three times, uh, waiting two minutes to retry, for example. And after the incomplete executions, uh, we have a make API that allows you to uh, get the incomplete executions and to start it again. Are you able to? This specific action shouldn't be replayed because you will uh, override the database. No, that's, that's, that's why I said it's uh, contextual. It depends on the use case. Uh, some use case, uh, it doesn't make sense to replay because, as you said, uh, there was no rollback, uh, so it will do again the same action. Yes. So, so, so obviously, uh, this has to be used in very specific cases where you can uh, replay. Uh, it's a super good question, in fact, because in some use cases you should never do this. Uh, just, just. Uh, Go back uh, to the previous steps. Uh, just as a side note, uh, there are now uh, APIs that are that can do rollbacks. It's very uh, th those that are written ACID. Uh, we saw we saw we had instant and ACID. ACID. Uh, oh, it's, a, it's a long story to uh, to explain, but it means that if you have a failure, it goes back to the previous steps. So that's super useful because uh, right, if you use only ACID and it fails at the end, everything is as if that not executed. Super important. But not all the APIs provide that. Uh, I think I'm done just for the for the demo. Uh, let's let's go back uh, to the presentation. Uh, so okay. So you see, in, in a few minutes, uh, finally, uh, we did it. Uh, between 15 minutes, but 15 minutes explaining what I'm doing. So you see how fast it is. You have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, the, what's the key differentiator to, or is there one to like Zapier? Oh. It's a, it's, a, it's a very long, very long, uh, it will be long to, to answer. Uh, what we hear from our customers yeah. is that they can go further. We can do, it will say, limitless possibilities because you can, uh, you can uh, do specific routes, routes uh, depending on some data. Uh, you can uh, also, when you design, you can move uh, the different modules from one place to the other. You can uh, uh, reorder, you can do uh, more things. So uh, Zapier is super good. For users, really not technical at all. Uh, this one is a little bit more technical, uh, so it requires more uh, play to be uh, uh, used to it. Uh, uh, but after you can do many more things. Okay. Uh, so 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 uh, I was talking about uh, saving time, um, uh, saving money, and marketer was talking about being successful. That, that's all the things. Uh, so. These are real numbers that we have uh, most of the time from customers. So you ask them uh, how much they, they save, uh, the time to design uh, the scenario, but also the, the time it saves running the, the scenario. And some, some customers save uh, uh, one employee, I would say, uh, time uh, for, for the year, uh, to make, uh, thanks to the information. So, so we have a lot of uh, nice use cases. So, uh, so we can do anything. So it was marketing, <coughs> and we have human resources, finance, marketing, uh, uh, sales automation. Uh, uh, we have, I have a lot of uh, sales uh, in my organization that make that use, uh, that use the solution to, uh, uh, to keep information from Salesforce, uh, to Salesforce, uh, to go to DocuSign to get the signature of their customers, and so on. So we can do, uh, we have uh, I, uh, ITSM uh, use cases uh, where we automate things, uh, Based on uh, requests, uh, uh, so this is one of the uh, services that uh, I did, uh, in fact, uh, for a proof of concept. Uh, it's an integration with Slackbox. In fact, uh, uh, there was a there was a system that was called it was a, a Salesforce. Uh, it's fine again, but it could be Jira or any other system. Uh, since now, um, oh, uh, then there's the uh, We have tasks, but the users that make a request do not have access to Salesforce. So, but they still needed uh, to interact with Salesforce. So we use Make uh, to interact with them through uh, a bot in a Slack. So we send them a form. They can say what they want. So if they type a support, automatically it starts uh, a new scenario. And this scenario will interact with the user, saying, OK, what do you want? New computer, uh, software licenses, etc. Or type your request directly. And uh, automatically, after, it generates a new task in Salesforce. And all the other interactions, like uh, the IT team says, uh, oh, you want a license of what? Uh, Office uh, 365? Okay. Um, yes, this is what I want. All the interactions are between uh, um, 
Slack and the comments, the comments that you can have in a task. You know? So the user, the user never has to access Salesforce, but still <laughs> the IT team accesses uh, Salesforce to interact uh, with this user. Still, uh, I thought that that's super, super useful. And this one very rapidly because uh, I see the time. Uh, this one also was interesting. It was a uh, 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 customer that wanted to synchronize the TCP system. He has uh, multiple systems. Uh, sorry again, it's again Salesforce. It's just a coincidence. I noticed now that uh, <laughs> I make a lot of publicity to Salesforce, but it could really be anything else. Uh, the idea is to capture the changes. So automatically, this one, this scenario detects uh, if there is uh, from a CSV file if there are uh, new entries, uh, modified entries, and deleted entries. So this one, that's everything, uh, and um, well, it's very useful because if you want to synchronize every time something is created in one system, uh, we can propagate only this data uh, to the other system. Systems, I would say, uh, this could be uh, multiple uh, multiple systems. Uh, just one uh, side note. So we see it's very uh, high level introduction, and uh, uh, at the end of October, so uh, I'm with um, some friends. Uh, maybe you them, you already saw them on YouTube uh, or different uh, uh, social media. Uh, we do uh, advanced session, so it's really advanced. So you can get, you can scan uh, the, the QR code uh, to join. Uh, it's a webinar. Uh, it could be in French, I'm in French, um, and uh, we talk about the advanced use cases we had with our customers. Uh, and for example, no, I won't say what I will talk about. Uh, I don't want to spoil, but I, I, I have. So it will be a use case where, we, where I use uh, in the scenario the API of Slack to do extra things uh, without using code. I automate the automation. It's a digital uh, teaser. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, uh, just uh, just now, uh, we do use, we, we bring our own champagne, so we, we use uh, Make uh, to automate most of the things uh, at, at work. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, so I would I wouldn't go too much in details, but uh, we are uh, customers of Make as well. Partnership also. And uh, yes, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, that's all for my demo. Uh, do we have any questions? Yes. Thank you very much for the demo. I just have one technical question on which software are the on which technology is your editor based on? Content editor. Ah, oh, that's a good question. I wouldn't say, you know, I knew, I don't remember the name, and that's a come back to me, but uh, you can join me uh, upstairs, yeah, sure. and we, I will find the information. Thank you, yes. yes. Second question? I have just the last question. What is the technology On what leverage do you pay for building, you know, account? Yes. I don't know. Uh, is it on how many execution you do? Is it on which, I don't know, um, uh, disponibility or whatever? Yeah. Now, in fact, we, we count every time you make a call, you see, I, I had a little one, 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 one. Yeah. Because I did a one call of API, one call, etc. It's the number of API calls that you do. Okay. And we call that an operation. Okay. So if you do 10 uh, calls to APIs in a scenario, you consume 10 operations. Okay. And uh, usually we, we, we propose a bunch of operations for my enterprise customer, because I do an enterprise version. This was the enterprise version, okay. by the way. Um, it's uh, when well, we say, okay, 1 million operations per year, 10 million operations per year, it depends. Uh, but you can go up to uh, just uh, 1,000 operations if you take the free subscription. You can upsell. Um, yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. We have customers that keep uh, uh, working with the uh, self serve uh, version. They okay. don't need more, and if really they need more, something uh, with security, uh, market that talked about, uh, they can switch to enterprise. So, yeah, you can convert APIs. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Dynamics which shows involvement in personal data of people across different systems and how do you handle that and make and comply with GDPR because there's personal data involved. Do you store this data on the side or? Yeah, explain so, so, so the answer would be super long, but we can discuss more. But let me uh, give you a, a little uh, uh, overview. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we do not keep the data. Uh, by, by default, you saw the logs, of yeah, course, yeah. Huh? we saw the logs, but we can, if you can decide not to store this information, so you just store the fact that it has executed, it took this okay, time, etc. So you can decide not to store. By the way, it's deleted after uh, 60 days, 
so even if it stays in the logs, it won't stay, and uh, we don't keep any other data. Uh, the other thing we usually uh, do is we use only HTTPS for the transport of, of the information from one system to the other, um, and uh, and uh, we. Uh, so, 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 but this is more or less the answer I can give now. Uh, but uh, we, we we can be compliant, uh, GDPR compliant. Uh, but it's also up to the customer to know that he is not like a uh, uh, If they want to delete uh, the information of a customer that they don't have interactions with after 12 months, uh, yeah. uh, well, they could automate it, but we won't do it, of course. We don't want to delete. Uh, so, so, we could use uh, the, the solution. Uh, to stay compliant, you can say, okay, uh, regularly I scan all the users with which I didn't have interactions, and if it's more than one year, I automatically delete uh, the policy. So it could be that could be used for a GDPR. Uh, so you can also then also It's a, it's a super question, and it also it, it can be I think to answer the previous question as well. Uh, when I use my personal account, uh, the API will be allowed only to the things I am allowed when I use Salesforce. Yeah. So, so in that case, if I don't have access to the salaries of my uh, other colleagues, uh, even with the API, I won't be able to do this. So, so this is a good way to, uh, to, to have GDPR as well. So you can handle the, uh, the ACLs and all the, the rights, the rules directly in the solution. And have the users use their own account to connect like this to show that what they can do on the on the website they, they can do uh, in the API, but what they can't do they can't do with the API. Uh, but you can also use a, a technical account. So yeah. most of the applications uh, you you can have an administrator that creates a consuming application. Right. So like connected like app, Salesforce. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. and uh, so they create the connection, and then the users leverage this connection. I guess they have complete control over what they can do, you know, the scopes and all this yeah. so you can see. The reason I ask that is because uh, if, if my account, if I leave the company and the, yes. the automation is built on my account log, and yes. it, it breaks for everybody, right? Yes, so, exactly, exactly. So, so so they use it, the, the, the solution is able to use a consuming application mm -hmm. that the administrator creates. Or if it's not possible, uh, we have a customer that uses a uh, fake account. In fact, they create an account in their uh, third party system. And this is the, the it's, a, it's not a, a real user, in fact, but okay. they use this account to make the connections. Okay. So it depends on the capabilities of the third party application. Okay. Yeah, can you more? Sorry, uh, yeah, just quickly, I just wanted to say I really enjoyed the recent features, really powered up my work, and I was wondering what the roadmap of new features is at the moment. So, normally, I'm not allowed uh, to, to give roadmaps, really, uh, but but there are new super nice features that comes uh, next week. Okay. There is one I really love about the execution of scenarios. And uh, sometimes uh, there are features we discover, like uh, the webhooks now. Mm -hmm. Today, I don't know if you tried them. Now you can have many details uh, about the webhook, the payload, uh, the headers, and everything can drill down into uh, each, each uh, new call that has happened in the webhook. And you can see uh, why it failed, uh, if it was called, but the scenario was not started, for example. Developer experience. Um, how do you? What's your thought about um, reviews and making sure that things work before they get pushed into the equivalent of production uh, environment? I mean, yeah, environments, mm -hmm. peer reviewing, that sort of thing. Where, where are you going? Yeah. Uh, in fact, those things are very 
in subject matter. Uh, so far, uh, orchestra bass can still do it. Uh, I think they are surprised once uh, they use the team uh, to do uh, teams of uh, development, a team of uh, production, a QA, QA, etc. And they, they close, they move, uh, they deploy. Uh, uh, they, they use the, uh, the, the, the schemes to move uh, the scenarios from one environment to the other. So you have a clone function. Uh, you can deploy the different environments uh, and it will give, of course, for each team a different connection. So you have development connection for the developers. You can have developers that only access to the dev team. Uh, and one guy, administrator, for example, that is uh, across all the teams that can move uh, from one environment to the other. And uh, when you do this, uh, the connections that you use in dev are not shared with the one used in QA, that are not shared with the one in the production. So you show that uh, the development team that do not have access to the pod team, uh, you show they can't access the production environment. You see? So you can handle this, and obviously because we have an API, uh, you can also uh, leverage uh, GitHub, so you can export, import the blueprints of the scenario. Uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, um, uh, Jenkins, for example, if you want to automatically move from one environment to the other. It's just uh, the, the question that up to you to do the things yeah, with the APIs. Yeah. And in the future, we uh, I hope we have very soon this uh, capability out of the box. Maybe one last question, because you raised it. Yeah. Is it possible to connect to uh, custom APIs? Yes. So I didn't show this. Yes, we do. Uh, in fact, we have uh, in the modules, you see, a uh, selected dot form and all the other things. Uh, you have a HTTP app that allows you to call any endpoint. So you can do a step the post, uh, with my hello, you can say uh, as if you were calling from uh, And you can build a custom app. So it's, you don't require any programming skills. You don't need to know uh, what is the JSON document. Uh, and in fact, you can build your own app and then deploy it in your organization so that the users that don't know anything about APIs can still use it like any native application. So, so you can extend the platform. Okay, last question. I don't know if that's yeah, uh, just yeah. ah, you wanted to yeah yeah just uh, in addition to this question and we can do it on the free uh, the free plan uh, I think because uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah I, I'm not sure you have to try you have to try uh, and normally uh, it's related to the user itself so me when I switch from, from one organization to the other I can deploy my own uh, app uh, in this organization. So because maybe it's related to user, possibly you can do it wh wherever you are. But I, I didn't try. Uh, so give it a try. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.